Hey you guys, Nyawe Scano, welcome back. Uh, this is Cheryl with Walking With Words. So <clears throat> hopefully you guys got to watch part one. If you didn't, please go back and watch that. <laughs> in part one, what I did was I tried my best to explain in a simplified way the very basic structure of a word. And I tried to um, explain what some of those linguistic terms are um, that you might hear from time to time. And so when I was actually making this video, I went and I sat with a another L2 uh, learner who is more a lot more knowledgeable in the linguistic stuff than I am. And then I also had a fluent speaker sit with us and I basically practiced this. And so you might have noticed that I'm like kind of talking to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason that I did that was because I wanted to give you, the viewer, an opportunity to, like, you know, if you're able to understand, like, try to um, put some things together for yourself and give you the space to do that. And so you'll notice that in this video as well. And I probably look really weird doing that, but hopefully you can understand and, and, and be able to keep up. Now, if that first video was just like kind of went over your head or it was just really really boring it's okay to admit it i totally understand <laughs> then maybe this video will help you and so um <clears throat> watch through the video and what we'll do is we'll take everything from that first one and we're actually going to take all of that and see what that looks like when you apply that to constructing a word now i have to give you a forewarning i didn't um, conjugate um, the male and female punctuals and the reason for that was because um, those are a little bit more tricky when you start getting into working with the modals in that and so I felt like it was best to maybe save that for a whole different video and then another thing I want to know is that um, actually earlier today I did some filming to talk about how to utilize utilize <laughs> utilize the resources on the Seneca language uh, .com website uh, I will link that in the description below. And so uh, on that web page, if you uh, click on books, all of the, um, the packet that I used for the pronouns, as well as the dictionary to get your stems or your roots, and then also the reconstructed basis book will give you your aspect suffixes. So I wanted to talk about how to utilize those, but I felt like that deserved its own separate video. And so thank you for watching that first part, and I hope that you enjoy and you get something out of the second one. So thank you again, and as the other thing that I want to show you that you'll see is you'll see something called the pronoun cards. And they look like this. This is just a blown up enlarged version. However, on the web page, they do have the pronoun cards available for print. And so these pronoun cards are exactly that. We have gyatdi, shatdi meaning you. Hayat D meaning him. Yayat D meaning her. Gayat D meaning it. This is Dehniase. Dehniase is referring to me talking to you, but not anybody else. If I'm telling you something, then I'm saying us too, we're going to do something. Dehniase. This pronoun card is for Deyakniase. Now, the yakniyase is when I'm talking to you about something that me and a friend did, but you weren't there. So again, it's what me and somebody else did, but you weren't there. That's the yakniyase. And so you see there's this circle around these two figures, and that's what it's representing. I, with my friend, did something, and I'm telling you because you weren't there, okay? This is called the sniyase, and the sniyase is you too. So, for example, if I'm talking to my son and my daughter, I would use desniase, you two, both of you. So you have an arrow pointing to these two people. Next, you have deniase. Deniase is two males, but it can also mean a male and a female. So you could be talking about somebody else, like another male and his friend, or 
your brother and his wife, de niase. This pronoun card is pronoun card is de kniase, and this is two females. This pronoun card is called Duaguego, and what that's talking about is all of us. You included, me included, the whole group, all of us. Duaguego. This pronoun card is Aguaguego. And so you can see that there's a circle around these people and they're telling another person. And so Aguaguego is if I'm talking about me and three or more people did something, but you weren't there. But I'm telling you the story about what we did. This is Swaguego. And so you see, it's just pointing to a bunch of random people. So Swaguego is all of you, not including me. Just, I'm talking to all of you, what you're all going to do. Hadiguego is a group of males. However, this can also be a group of males with a female involved. So if there's a group, maybe you have three men and two women, that can also be Hadiguego. And then you have Wadiguego, which is a group of females. However, it's important to know that when you're talking about, for example, Yeyati, which is a female, this can mean her, but it can also mean someone. Meaning, maybe someone you don't know, or just somebody else, without specifying. And I think that's it. So again, these cards are available on the website um, for any of you at home that are trying to get resources and not sure where to start. That website is a really good place to start for any new learner. Um, I utilize the pronoun cards a lot when I'm trying to practice um, conjugating and switching a word around. So now, so now what I'll do is I'll show you um, what that looks like, what that process looks like, okay? So, going back to the board, we're going to start with, I'll give you some pronouns, okay? So first I'm going to start with the term, the, the root. Adekoni. So looking at this word, which we actually had up earlier, what kind of root is it? It's an A stem root, okay? Because I know it's an A stem, that means that when I look at that list of pronouns, I'm going to look at A stem pronouns. My A stem pronouns for agents is going to be G, S, H, and then Y, nasal O. And I'm just going to do yati, shanti, hayati, yayati. Me, you, him, and her. Just for an example. Our patient is going to be notice that when you look at that pronoun sheet, you're going to see letters that are in black and you're also going to see letters that are high underlined and under are under, underlined in black. So the reason for that is this right here, this AG for Gyati, which is me, and this YA, which is Yago for female, these don't show up unless something's in front of the word, okay? So I like to think about like, okay, so say, you know, you're going to go and somebody invites you over to their house for dinner. They say, oh, we're having all these people come over for dinner. You should come over for dinner, right? And you're thinking, and you kind of ask them, like, well, who's all going to be there, right? Like, is it worth me getting in my car and going all the way over there? <laughs> but it's like, well, well, who's all going to be there, you know? And so it's kind of like I think of that because... 
If there's nothing else in the front, it's just going to be this AG. However, depending on who shows up to the party, that's when this W is going to pop in, right? So if something comes in front of the pronoun, that's when the W is going to come in. It's the same thing for this yuggle. This, this YA isn't even there. It's just G-O if there's nothing that comes before it. However, if there's going to be something that comes before that pronoun, that YA is going to come into the picture, okay? The other thing I want to point out is the fact that if you see these O's, right, they are underlined, okay? These O's are underlined. The reason for that is it denotes the fact that when this O shows up to the party, this A is going to go away. Basically, the O overtakes this A, this A is going to drop off, and you're just going to have your pronoun and then deconi, deconi, right? Now... And this is why it's important to pay attention to what your root is, because these pronouns will change depending on what kind of root you have. Not ridiculous changes. You're going to see patterns, okay? You'll see patterns. However, you do need to know what kind of root you're going to have to know what kind of pronouns you're going to have, okay? So now moving over to here, the third part of our puzzle that we need, so we have puzzle piece one, we have puzzle piece two, and I'm not going to get into transitives, that'll be a whole nother lesson. I just want to focus on agents and patients, okay? So we have our, uh, we have our verb root, and now we're going to get into our aspect suffix. So on this particular word, a habitual is denoted by an S. A stative is denoted by an H, and a punctual will be a glottal. So a glottal is a sudden stop, like a <laughs> Okay, so in this word, we have S for habitual, H for our stative, and a glottal for a punctual. Now, in this term, this S is acting as a true habitual which means that if I use this S, it means that that person always does that, right? If I use the stative, it means something that they, they are doing now. Like that's what, that's what I'm doing now, that's what she's doing now, they are currently in a state of being. And if I use the punctual, then I can say, I will, I might, I did eat, okay? Another thing I wanna know is that with the punctuals, I'm actually going to kind of go off to the side and show you how to work with these modals a little bit because that can also be tricky. And again, I'm only doing gyatdi, shatdi, hayatdi, and yayatdi just because as you go further into the pronouns, there's more that kind of goes into working with these, with these modals, okay? And that, that's like a whole other lesson. I just want to focus on the basic understanding of how this word's going to flow, okay? So for example... If I want to say, I eat, I eat all the time, I am always eating, right? I'm going to use which aspect suffix? The habitual. Now, there's a reason why I color coded this. For just a basic learner, a habitual will use an agent pronoun, which means it will use a red. And you'll see when you look at that pronoun chart what I'm talking about. A stative will use a patient pronoun. So my habitual will use these agents, my stative will be using these blue patients, and a punctual will also be using the agents along with the modal coming on front. A transitive will go with any one of these. Okay, a, a transitive can be matched up with any one of these. Okay, so back to our puzzle. I want to say I always eat. So how do you think I would do that? I'm going to take G for Yadi, me. I'm going to add my root, part two, and then the third part that I'm going to add is going to be my habitual aspect suffix. 
and I end up with Gade Konis. Okay? Gade Konis. So do you see what I did? I took my pronoun, I added my root, and then I added my aspect suffix. And what I created was, I always eat. Let's try another one. How would you say, you always eat? How would you do that? You always eat. What's the first thing that you want? You're right. The first thing that you want is going to be your S, your pronoun for you, your verb root, and lastly, your habitual aspect suffix, S. Sedekonis. Some of you more advanced language learners or some that have experience, you might be saying, but what about your elongations? What about your elongations? For the purpose of this, what I'm doing right now, I'm not really going to worry about the elongations. Um, I will say that, you know, an elongation is when a, when, a, when a sound is drawn out for about a half a second longer than it normally would be. Um, and just you know, just to bring it in. An elongation is usually, from what I understand, if you have three syllables in a word, it will be on your second syllable. If you have five syllables in a word, it will normally be on your fourth syllable. Pretty sure. I think that's right. Now, let's take Sadekonis off. And I want you to try to say, he always eats. H- Adekoni S. Hadekonis. She always eats. Yon. Adekoni S. And what do you get? Yon. Dekonis. Remember, this O is going to overtake this A, and you're going to end up with Yon. Dekonis. Let's try a different aspect suffix. The next aspect suffix we'll use is going to be our stative. So we know it's going to be this H. So because we're using a stative aspect suffix, that means we're going to use our patient pronouns, which are going to be blue. Again, there is no modal, nothing's coming on the front, so we're just going to use that AG. So if I want to say, I'm eating now, I'm eating now, I'm going to say, I, which is the AG, my verb root, and then my aspect suffix, which is going to be an H. Now, another thing that I want to point out is that this H is a bit in debate. In the other Iroquoian languages, they don't use this H, okay? It's almost like this H is kind of acting like a placeholder. So for those of you who are more advanced in linguistics or understanding the grammar of an Iroquoian language, you might kind of be questioning this H. We have a lot of H's in our language. We created a lot of changes to our language, which makes it very different from, say, Mohawk, or Tuscarora or um, Oneida, okay? So when you see this H, really what it's doing is like you're coming through Agade Koni, and you're not saying Agade Koni like that, not Agade Koni. Really what it is, is it's this I kind of coming down, Agade Koni, right? So it's no Nis, Ni, it's Ni, Agade Koni, but you're not really hitting that H kind of hard, okay? So I just want to point that out. So what we get is we have agade koni. Um, I'm eating right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm eating now. Let's take this ag out and let's make a switch. If I want to say you're eating right now, right now you're eating. What would I add? S. Sade koni. 
Let's say I want to say, he's eating. Heo wog is eating. Our O is going to overtake our A. And what do you think we're going to end up with? Hode koni. Okay? Now I'm going to take this off and I want you to try it for yourself. I want to say she's eating. Nate Kaowak, my daughter, she's eating right now. How would you do that? We have Yago for her. Because nothing's coming in front, we're not even going to use this YA. We're going to take our GO, we're going to add this, and we're going to add our H aspect suffix. The A is going to come off because the O is going to take it over, and we end up with Gode Koni. Okay? Now, we're going to get into the punctuals. Now, working with modals can be a little bit confusing, and this is why I would just say that practice. Practice with them. Um, that's really what's going to do it. Um, there is a pattern, uh, and after you do it for a while, you will become really accustomed and you'll be able to do it a lot quicker. But again, it just takes practic uh, practice and really you know, trying your best to, to create words and testing them out and seeing what works and what doesn't. And you know, we all learn through kind of you know, making our mistakes. We all follow up when we're trying to, trying to say a new word or we're trying to conjugate. Um, so we all do it. It's just a part of being a language learner for anybody, okay? Um, so we know that we want to use our punctual, and when we use our punctual, we need to add on this fourth box. So for now, I'm just going to do me and you, and then I'm going to take this off and I will show you how to use the male and female, um, how to add the modals with these male and females, because things will switch up a little bit here. Um, so for example, I know that I'm using the punctual. So if I'm using the punctual, what color pronoun am I going to use? You're right, agent. Remember, a transitive, it can go with any of these. But for a punctual, um, when you're just talking about me, you, him, her, us, to, them, to, not him to her or anything like that, you're going to use an agent, okay? And so for that punctual, I have G. Now, if I want to say I will, I'm going to add a nasal E. So down here I'll write it. I'm going to write my future modal. I'm going to add a G, which is talking about me. I'm going to add my verb root, adekoni. And at the end of that, I'm going to use my punctual aspect suffix, which is a glottal. And what I end up with is e, ga, de, this is why, for any new language learner, it's so important to take your words all the way to the end. I'll also say this. When you're learning grammar, it's easy to get lost in the rabbit hole. Don't do that. This is just a tool to help you acquire and retain language longer or faster. However, it's not the only thing you should be doing. You should also be pushing yourself to try to use new words when you're talking to a fluent speaker or another L2 learner. Not just this, okay? So, back to our punctuals. We have in Gande Koni. Now, say I want to say, before I erase this, say I want to say, you will eat. What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to drop the G, and I'm going to add an S, keeping my nasal E, and I end up with S-A-D-E-K-O-N-I. You will eat. 